You're listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show, where your host, Nicole Holland, gets the lowdown from today's most talented, inspiring, and successful entrepreneurs on what it really takes to reach rockstar status. Hey there, Nicole Holland on the Business Building Rockstar Show. You're listening to episode six. Today's episode is brought to you by the Business Building Rockstar Summit, an annual event that brings together 30 business building rock stars from all over the world to talk about their favorite marketing strategies. You can access the Business Building Rockstar Summit for free from November 1st to 30th each and every year from the comfort of your own home. Last year's summit, Business Building Rockstar Summit 2015, featured my guest for today, Anthony John Amex, as the Twitter rockstar that he is. Anthony's interview is still available as a part of the Business Building Rockstar Summit VIP Backstage Pass, where you will get all 30 interviews in video, audio, and transcribed format. You can check that out at bbrshow.com forward slash bbrs2015. Again, that's bbrshow.com forward slash bbrs2015. Today's episode is incredibly personal and definitely hit home for me as Anthony shared some of his childhood experiences as well as moving through familial wounds. Anthony dropped value bombs galore. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hey there, entrepreneur. This is Nicole Holland, and you're listening to the Business Building Rockstar Show. Today, I'm hanging out with my friend, Anthony John Amex, and I'm so excited to have him here on the show. Uh, Anthony was actually my very, very, very first interview ever, and he participated uh, in the 2015 Business Building Rockstar Summit. Anthony John Amex is the creator's mentor. He teaches business executives, small business owners, and marketing professionals how to claim their calling, monetize their message, and implement modern day marketing systems to generate more leads and sales. Anthony is the founder of Conquer Creator, host of the Anthony John Amex show, and creator of the online course Tweet Like a Rockstar. And before we get into everything, Anthony, I just want to ask you, double check, are you ready to rock? It's the way I live my life. So you know I'm like totally ready to rock like every freaking day. So yeah, absolutely. Awesome. Yes, you do. And that's why I'm super, super excited to have you here. Um, Why don't you fill us in a little bit more about what you're up to now? So it's really helping like the, what I call like creators, like people who, who feel this calling to make this world a better place. I mean, you're like the perfect example of this, Nicole, you transition out of corporate, you had this calling to change people's lives and you put on the summit, right? And so my, my whole calling has been able to equip them with the skill sets because so much in the marketplace, at least in this online marketplace, it's like so full of hype. And people like selling people false hopes, false dreams, and it's easy peasy. Just host a webinar. You're going to make six figures in 30 days. Life is great. But that's not the truth, right? So everything that I'm committed to creating moving forward is equipping people with the skill sets and not just the skill sets because the marketing mechanics will fail you if that's all you rely on. Like if you're looking at the strategy to be your savior, like you're totally going to set yourself up for failure. So you have to understand that to, to conquer as a modern day creator, that it comes down to implementing the game in three pieces, which is personal power, marketing, uh, modern day marketing, and then strategic sales systems. And you have to level up all three of these and move the ball in all three of these areas simultaneously. Now, if you can do that, then you can start making your dreams a reality, but you cannot just focus on one at a time. Like it has to be a simultaneous process. So that's kind of what I'm focused on. It's what I've been working with all my clients and I'm working on myself, of course, as well. You have to, you know, like be the message, number one, which is that personal power. And then you have to start living it so you're not feeling like an imposter by preaching something and do something else behind the, the a closed laptop rather than closed doors and then get into start sharing the message. Beautiful. So how long have you been an entrepreneur? So that's a good question. Um, 
you know, I guess that as an entrepreneur, it's just like one of those things that maybe you've done like forever. Like, cause I remember like having to sell candy at lunchtime when I was in, uh, was I in fifth grade? Yeah, I was in fifth grade because I was going to play soccer in England and we needed to make extra income. So like my mom and dad were doing like their side hustle, doing painting and stuff for one of the local doctors. And like I had two lunch boxes I would take to school, one with my lunch and the other one I had was like full of candy and I was just selling candy at lunchtime. In fact, I get in trouble by the principal once for selling bubble tape. They're like, dude, you can't sell bubble tape. And I was like, what are you kidding me? Like, that's my best seller. You can't take my bubble tape away from me because they're like finding the gum under the desk and stuff. So that my best seller got shut down. So I guess you could say I've always been a little bit different um, as far as understanding how to make money. And then when I got into university, like I just, I just love the idea of just like creating something from nothing. I mean, I think that's like what a creator does, right? We all have that, not everybody, but creative people have that calling to create something out of completely nothing. And that's always been with me. Um, even I've never really had a job. Like I've always been a contractor, like even straight out of university, I worked for an ad agency. I was a contractor. So, you know, I needed to be there at a certain time, but they're not going to like fire me. Like if I got there 10 minutes late or something, like it was all about results. And it was like, here's what you need to get done for the week. Have it done by like Tuesday. And then I'm like piddling around like, oh, what do I do for the rest of the week? But, um, you know, this is kind of the way that I've always lived my life and I've really enjoyed it that way. Very cool. And I love that you're talking about selling candy because I just had this total flashback that I totally forgot about. But we used to go down to this warehouse. There was like this big, huge warehouse, like down below the railroad tracks in Baltimore. And my dad used to take us in there and we would buy all this bulk candy. Yeah. Totally loved bubble tape, had the pink and the purple. Oh, yeah. And sold it. And I forgot completely about that. So, <laughs> how old were you when you did that? Probably about the same age as you, probably nice. in elementary school. Yeah. And my brother, see, Sean never actually really took to entrepreneurship like I did. And mm -hmm. The more I think about all these things that my dad kind of seeded as a child, probably unintentionally, he just probably thought it was fun and he was not an entrepreneur. So maybe yeah. he just thought this would be fun to do. This would be fun to do. So I got to be the guinea pig. But my brother really never took to it. But um, I remember he was there at least once, but usually it was a trip with me and my dad. Yeah, and it's interesting that you say like your brother didn't take to it um, because like I grew up in, in a family where all the men, I guess you could say, were entrepreneurs. I mean, my grandfather, he worked for a company and then he's like, dude, if I'm making this person hundreds of millions of dollars a year, I'm going to start my own company. He took his tax return of $10,000 and turned it into a $20 million construction company. And then my dad and his brother bought the company from my grandfather. So I've always been around like people running their business. So I guess, you know, I took to it. But if I look back now, like just as of like now, my sister didn't take to it. I mean, she does like, she's a super high paid salesman for um, one of the local car dealerships here, like one of the top women in the entire company. And then my brother's in the Navy. So it's this kind of, uh, I could see how some people take to it and some don't. Yeah, it's interesting. Eh? And I think that um, something that I notice with entrepreneurs that I've worked with is that a lot of times there's just that, that interest in always doing something. Like you said, you've always been doing different things. And when I was younger, I, I kind of saw it through the eyes that weren't right. I just saw it through, I don't know whose glasses, but they weren't the mm -hmm. right ones I should have been wearing. Um, that it was like, oh, well, I nobody will want to work with me because I've done this and I've done this and I've done this and I've moved here and I've done this and I've been a gypsy and you know I've been all over the place. And now that I can really embrace who I am entirely, it's like, hell yeah, I did this and I did this and I did this and this is how it's going to help you. Yeah. And I think that, you know, a lot of our listeners are in that place where they're thinking about entrepreneurship. They feel the calling. How, what would you say to them when they're going, well, why would anybody hire me? You mentioned imposter syndrome. So I think, you know, you have to come and understand like your questions determine your reality. So if you're asking really disempowering questions, then you're going to get disempowering answers. I mean, it's like this universal law, ask and you shall receive. So if you're asking the question, which is, well, who's going to, why would somebody listen to me? Well, you're going to find reasons of like, well, you know, I'm just using you as an example. Nicole. Well, I'm a gypsy. They're not going to like that. I was a gypsy or, oh, I did this. Oh, they're not going to like that. Oh. And so you're just like, oh, oh, oh. I'm like, so you're finding the answers to back that question up, right? So the first piece of it is becoming aware and being like, okay, is this question that I'm asking, is it empowering me to take the next step or is it disempowering me? That's the first piece is being aware. And once you can catch yourself being like, oh, this is interesting. 
This is like not helping me for, move forward. This is helping me feel like feelings of guilt, feelings of shame, feelings of frustration. These are literally all low frequencies if we start looking at the frequencies that we exist in, as a human being. So we have to switch the question. So number one was aware. So now that we're aware of it, we're like, okay, well, how could this be an empowering question? Which is, well, why wouldn't somebody want to listen to me? Just changing the verbiage. You're like, well, they would want to listen to me because I am a gypsy because I learned this, 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 and this. And it adds value to their life because it brings this result to them. Or they would listen to me because I experienced this and this brings value to them. Okay, interesting. Okay. Then the next piece of that is like do something immediately. Otherwise, if you're just always going to be like, well, I need more information. I need more information. I need more information. You will never move the ball forward. And the only thing that's going to help us shift our mindset is a new experience. You can't talk your way into it. You can't meditate your way into it. You can't visualize your way into it. The only thing to shift your mindset is a new experience. So once you're aware, you're asking the empowering question, then it's literally like leaning into that fear, doing the thing that you're afraid to do to then have a new experience where you're like, oh, I didn't die. This is good, right? I can do this. I didn't, I didn't die. I'm still here on the planet. And then you can start moving. There's a step by step by step by step. You start creating this empire. It's not going to happen overnight, right? And Rome wasn't built overnight. Your idea, your dream is not going to be either. I love that. And like, honestly, I could listen to you all day long. Every time you start talking, I think just preach, just keep on going. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, something we kind of talked about before we started rolling was, um, my story, my experience. And as I mentioned, you were the first ever interview for yeah. me and you mentioned building your empire. And that's exactly how I put it. Like I am hustling hard. I am busting my ass every day, but it's with intention. So it's fun. You know, people go, how can you work like 12 hours, 16 hours a day? And I'm like, it's just what I have to do right now. Like I'm so inspired and it feels so good to set things up. Now I also got to take care of myself, but of like, I'm just... When, I think when you're really clear and you're really sure, once you get to that point, everything just, it's just oh, smooth sailing, eh? Absolutely. And you know, there's this beginning phase. Like I look at my life right now. I do not work 16 hours a day. I refuse to. Like I, I, I'm like, how can I get more done with less time? I, I just, I, but I didn't start that way, right? I could say, well, I only work eight or 10, hour, 10 hours a day. But if you look back into 2009, 2010, 11, 2012, I was putting in those 14, 16 hour days. I wasn't like engaged. I wasn't dating anybody. I was eating pizza and ramen. I was <laughs> in, like, one bedroom, little place in East Texas. Like, I guess, you know, that's just the piece. I was willing to sacrifice. I was willing to go through that experience to ultimately get me where I'm at today. So I just think people need to understand that's, that's a part of the process. Not seeing that, well, that's working for Nicole, so that is the solution. No, that works for Nicole. Or you could say, well, this was what I experienced, so therefore that is the way. No, this is what worked for me. So each person has to just, number one, get clear on like, what in the hell do you want? Like, there is no right or wrong answer. I actually had this, this, this conversation with my brother. He's actually fighting in the Middle East right now. And he's like, dude, I don't know if I want to renew my contract or not renew my contract. I'm going to take this test. And if I don't pass the test, I'm not. And I'm like, dude, stop being a little pussy. Like, don't let the test be the thing that's going to define your future. Like, if that's what you want, then fucking take that test 300 times if you have to. Don't let the thing be the obstacle to make or break whatever you want to experience. But if the Navy is not what you want to experience, totally cool. I love you. What do you want to experience? And then what do you need to do to have that experience? So the message here for those listening is just like, number one, get clear on what you want and then do what you need to do. And you don't have to be like, oh, I got to, I, I have to spend 16 hours. So I just got to like go all out. I got to quit my job. I got to do that. No, maybe it's just like um, the first step is like, I need to get clear on what I want. Okay. What's the next piece? Well, maybe it's building your, your web presence or getting clear on who your audience is. And you're like, okay, well, I'm devoting an hour a day because that's all I have right now to get clear on the audience. Do that and then take the next step rather than thinking like most entrepreneurs. And I wish I could go back in time. And I remember this is one of your questions that I think you emailed me to. If I could go back in time, what would that be? And it's like, stop trying to hit the damn grand slam. Like in baseball, you're like at the plate. You're like thinking of fucking Babe Ruth trying to hit the home run like every single time. Rather than understanding that the, 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 the teams that win games consistently, not luck, but consistently are just like, let me get a base hit. It is simple, like base hit. Just one. Right, just base hit, boom. Next one, base hit, base hit. Now the bases are loaded. They're not trying to make the grand slam. It's just like base hit, base hit. 
run, run, base hit, run, run. And then every now and then, because you have cash flow coming in, step up to the plate and then hit the damn ball and hit a home run. Like, what up, bitches? I just made this game. I hit a home run. That felt good. But get back in the dugout and be like, base hit, base hit. And as long as we can stay as like entrepreneurs and like bring it down slower, like to slow down and focus and be like, what's my base hit for the day? And then do it. Right. And yes, we're going to have stuff that's going to come up and we're going to have like mindset, like uh, obstacles and opportunities for growth. But we just have to slow down so that we can actually go fast. And I think if I could go back in time to 2009, 10, 11, I wish I would have just like slowed down and just focus on base hit, base hit, base hit, because I feel like I would be miles ahead of where I'm at right now. But now that I've taken the time to slow down, life is so much more easy and I make way much more, like a lot more money with a lot less stress. Beautiful. That's such an amazing, uh, that, yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> um, so you mentioned obstacles. Can we talk a little bit sure. about what obstacles you've encountered yourself that you had to figure out how you're going to overcome? I think my biggest, like the biggest obstacle what is always like self-doubt. So I'm like ridiculously creative for those who've never heard my story. Um, go listen to Cole, like go by her summit, listen to my story in the summit. But if you, if you know, if you want to do that, just like really briefly. So I've always been really ridiculously creative. And so I spent 10 years of my life touring as a professional musician. So as a musician, you have this, this blessing, which is you're ridiculously creative and you can create something out of nothing. People call this like an alchemist, etc. But the, the curse that comes with that blessing is like your internal dialogue is like beating the shit out of yourself like a lot, okay? And so I had to learn that I had to honor my word for self and rather than creating businesses and money and success for external validation, like from my father, from my grandfather, from those that I respect, like if I respect people, I want to like prove my worth to them. Instead, I needed to slow down and then ask myself, okay, what do I need to do to prove my worth for myself? What do I need to do to have respect for myself? What do I need to do to have admiration for myself? And once I did that, then everything started to shift for me because then people could start respecting and admiring me because I respected and admired myself. Because we have to understand that the world shows up to be our mirror, right? So if I'm not respecting and admiring myself, and I'm like, why are these people respecting me? because I don't have respect for myself. But once I can have respect for myself, then people start giving me the respect and the admiration. And it's not that I want the praise. I don't give a shit about the praise. I don't care about the raw, raw fans praising autographs. I've done that. I don't care anything about that. It's all about what do I want to experience for me and my own validation. And when I did that, everything started to shift because in sales conversation, it was no longer about price for me right? It was no longer like, oh, I, I need to make this a good deal for them because I want them to like me. No, like this is what I value doing what I do at. And if it's a good fit for you, fantastic. If it's not, that's okay too. I love you, but it's not going to be a good fit. Like we have to find a win-win here, right? That was like still to this day, the biggest obstacle that I have is completely self-doubt. And I have to come back to where we started this interview is become aware of my self-talk, shift to empowering questions, and then moving, doing something to shift out of that. I mean, like, that's it. I mean, that's why I'm committed. I just joined boxing. One of my coaches was like, hey, dude, one of the best things that you can do is go hit, get hit in the face and understand that you're not going to die. And I'm like, all right. To the gym I go to get hit in the face. <laughs> Yay, right? So I haven't got hit in the face yet because I've just been, like, learning how to throw a punch. I'm, like, the worst boxer on, the, like, the face of boxing. I'm terrible, right? I've only done, like, two weeks of this. But it's always just for me pushing my, my skill sets, pushing my mindsets, and um, man, just like gym, water, meditation, like those simple things, like have had a tremendous impact on my business and my relationship and my connection to even myself and to, to spirit or God or whatever word we want to use. Beautiful. I love how you brought all that together because I think it's so important to recognize that nothing's separate. When we're, when we're on point and when, when things are flowing, they're flowing in all aspects of our lives. So we can't say, well, I've got a great relationship, but my business sucks or my business is great, but I have, it's like, no, it's either life is good or you got some shit to work out. And I think exactly. that also regardless of what level we get to, there's always work to do, always, always, always work to do interpersonally. And I think that's a misconception a lot of people have when they're starting out. They think that there's some like 
prize. Like they're going to get the golden, you know, goblet and everything's going to be great. And it's like, no. And sometimes, well, not sometimes, I think oftentimes we as entrepreneurs, people I've worked with, myself included, is we don't always stop to appreciate and celebrate all of our little accomplishments, you know, just that base hit, that base hit, that base hit, and just celebrating those along the way, man, it's like, it's important and it, it brings more in and just that flow is so fantastic, eh? You're absolutely on point. I mean, if you look at nature, like nature is, is perfect, right? You either thrive or you die. Like there, there is no complacency. Like if you are complacent, if you're good, you're dying. I mean, if you look, you look at the grass, it's either growing or decaying. There, there is no middle ground. So if you look at humanity, you know, us as human and our human experience, that's the same thing. Like you're either thriving, you're either pushing the boundaries to expand your capacity to level up in every area of life or you die, right? Because if you're only saying, well, I'm only choosing to focus on my area of money right now, but I'll get to, once I hit this number, then I'll get to this. And then I've been there. I, I used to think that. And I used to think, well, if I, I could not date a woman until I made $10,000 a month, why I had that belief, I have no freaking idea. But that was my belief, right? I thought I wouldn't have value unless I had that, right? And then so once I hit that number, nothing changed for me. And then I was like, okay, well, maybe it's 20,000 a month. Hit that number. Nothing changed for me. And it wasn't until understanding exactly what you're saying. How we do one thing is how we do all things. So if, if we are looking and we're just focusing on business and we're not taking care of self, well, there's no way in hell we're going to be able to show up for somebody else in our relationship. There's no way that I can expand my connection with source. There's no way I can expand my connection with myself. There's, there, there's just no possible way. There's no way I can expand my physicality and my body to show up with more power and confidence and certainty. So that's what people have to understand as an entrepreneur. Like you're either thriving or you're dying. Like there is no middle ground. And what, one of the analogies, because I, I love analogies and metaphors, and here in Texas, like in the summertime, we have like, uh, I call them locusts. That's what like the East Texas, we call them locusts down here in the country. And, <laughs> can you know, wait, like, do that again. Do, do <laughs> I don't think I can do that one again. <laughs> <laughs> There's, I think they call like Akitas or Cicadas. something. Cicadas. Yeah, there you go. Yes. The little green things. And like in the summertime, you wake up in the morning and the little brown shell is like glued to the tree and they're off. I guess, in a new form or whatever, a bigger form, right? But each night they are, however many times, they're shedding their skin to come into. And so I always feel like that's the perfect example of us and our human experiences. Like every day we should be shedding our, our skin, like and attaching it to the tree to evolve into the next best version of ourself in every area of our life. And the only way to do that is coming right back to the central theme is what do you want? become aware of what's going on and then take the actions to do the work to ultimately have that experience to expand. Like there is no other option. Awesome. Very, very nice. I, I just have this like vision of, you know, the cicadas all swarming though now. <laughs> <laughs> They're like going to eat all the crops. And, and then I think the next one is like frogs, no flies. <laughs> frogs and then like blood and pharaoh gets angry well did you that. see i grew up in maryland so i don't know if this is the same in texas but when it was cicada season which was only like every seven years or six years or something we'd have every once in a while like little bits of flying around but like they would come in like droves and you'd be driving down the road it's like they're like the size of birds <laughs> talking about the same so thing. We, we don't have i mean we won't have like swarms like that it's just like you hear them in the trees and you wake up and I remember being a kid and you'd like pick the little brown things like oh look at all the ones i found little shells and it's like a game to find like the most little shells i think i was traumatized as a kid like, <laughs> flying and hitting in the like ah. <laughs> anyways okay cicadas moving on yes it's a fantastic analogy though about shedding and um you know you you mentioned if you were going to go back what kind of advice you would give tell me about if you could go back and just kind of play it back in your mind. Sure. What was your kind of light bulb moment or it, were, was there one? Yeah, so my biggest um, light bulb moment, and this is very recent, is I was at this, uh, this event with one of my coaches and we're leading as a small group, just five guys. And it was this event called, um, um, what was it called? Being Evolution. So it's all about expanding your, your passion, your purpose, uh, marketing, business, sales, again, all three of these areas into one little thing. And one of the things that Jeremy said was, and it was, again, like, if you don't respect yourself, then how in the hell do you expect somebody else to respect you? And for whatever reason, I was like, holy shit, 
motherfucker, I need to do that. I need to figure out how to respect myself. And that was the shift. And so then life, right, started mirroring. And, the, and there was a time in, in my life where my father and I, we had this, this great connection. We hunted together. We, we, he coached my soccer team when I was a kid. Like he was like on the pedestal, you know, owned a business, like perfect example, right? Like, and so everything that I wanted to create, it was like, I just want dad's approval. I just want him to be like, good job, son, which would never, ever freaking happen. And due to some, some circumstances in our family with my niece and, and everything like him getting a divorce from my mom after 25 years and him getting a new wife and all of this crazy stuff, he, you know, they've created these, these, these perceptions of, of things. And we're not going to get into those today. But one, here's, here was the turning point. We, my brother and uh, his, um, his girlfriend were down from Virginia. He, just got, you know, he was about to be deployed, so he came down and he, he invited us over. And I said, all right. So we came over and we're having dinner. And we had just, Sarah and I just got engaged in, Oct in October. So we're, we're in, uh, what year? We're in 2016. So just like 2015, late 2015 at dinner time. And Sarah asked my dad, he said, she said, Hey, are you guys coming to the wedding? And dad looked at his wife and she, and then the wife was like, um, when is it? Even though they knew when it was. And Sarah's like, Hey, it's going to be in February, 2017. And they said, Oh, we're busy. And so Sarah was like, well, what are you guys doing? She's like, well, it's our anniversary. And she's like, okay, well, you know, you guys have an anniversary every single year. We get married once. We'd love to have you guys there. And then she's like, oh, well, I have to work. And then I'm sitting there boiling, like, just because I understood it was excuse after excuse after excuse. And so Sarah kept, and I finally had enough, and I blew up. And I said, hey, if you're not going to fucking come, then just fucking man up and say, I don't want to come. I need you to be truthful. That's how you raised us. I don't know what the fuck this is. So he's like, okay, fine, we're not coming. I'm like, thank you. It's all I needed from you. So then we wrapped up for dishes and he's like, hey, I need to talk to you and your brother outside. So we went outside after dinner and then we got to dialogue about this whole experience and why he didn't want to come. And I, I'm cool with it. But during the conversation, I'll never forget. And I said, hey, I, I feel like there's something else going on. And this is just, this is just kind of just floating and I, I can't nail it down. And I keep feeling like you don't feel appreciated or something. Is that right? And he said, yeah, which is crazy because growing up, I, I, did, I was you know, top of my class, graduated college, top of my class. I paid for my school. I never asked for like, you know, in anything. I, I mowed the lawn because we live next door. I own the house next door. Tree fall. Like I, I did everything to be the perfect son to have the admiration and respect and approval. And I said, okay, using my skills of communication, I looked him in the eye and I said, okay, dad, well, I can't change. That's how you feel. I don't understand it, but that is the way you feel. That's how you feel what can I do to help you feel appreciated? And he looked down at the ground and he was like, hmm, it's a really good question. I don't know. And I knew at that moment that I would never have his admiration or respect ever. So I had to then shift immediately to pivot to have my own self-respect and my own admiration. And that, Nicole, was like the pivotal moment for me. Because up to that point, everything that I had created from touring on in, in, on in a band from having record deals to you know having a tour bus to like you know playing in front of thousands of people to transitioning here and teaching at creative live and doing virtual summits and making money and everything was just like I want your admiration or approval so being able to transition and be like okay that won't happen I don't need that what do I need to do now to then just fucking love myself that was the big pivotal moment for me Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. I, I, appreciate, your, I appreciate your vulnerability yeah. and, and the rawness of that. And, um, you know, I, I have to say that I, it, it, it resonates a lot with me and very similar to uh, my kind of moment as well. And so I feel like, you know, everything in the universe works perfectly. And so I know that this is going to hit a lot of people and, um, so here's the, here's the thing yeah. I want to add on to this. So I've been having this conversation with my clients over and over again, because a lot of my clients are, they're high producers. They're, they like, they own million dollar, multi-million dollar businesses, high six figures, high seven figure owners. And they all have the same thing, which is they're a high producer, which is a beautiful thing. That's their blessing. But their curse is they've always created because they want somebody else's admiration and approval. And as a result, they lie in bed, feeling like a fraud, feeling guilt, feeling shame. Rather than being like, dude, I'm a freaking badass. I'm a powerful creator. I don't have to feel these feelings of guilt and shame. And when you feel the feelings of guilt and shame, you feel heavy. Like it's a burden that you're carrying. And after they can shift, usually by me just being able to share the story and be open and vulnerable. I mean, I believe this, like Jesus said, the meek shall inherit the earth. I believe this means like those of us are being, being willing to be open and transparent and vulnerable. We have influence because we literally connect with people at a heart level. They're like, oh my gosh, thank you. We don't have to put on masks, right? You can just be open and real. 
So when I'm open and real and share these stories with them, that's why I'm okay with sharing the story right now because if I can just touch one person and help them understand and shift like, oh, and release all of that baggage, they can start creating from this place of freedom. When they do that, they start making more money with less stress. And everything opens up, right? Everything Absolutely. Up. When you stop looking for that approval that you've been that you've been growing up looking for, and you release yourself from the attachment, it's like. Yeah. The other story that's going to anchor this in, and this is really powerful for me, and I was talking to one of my mentors about this. And so I was able to transition that from the relationship with my father. Then the next relationship that I got to challenge and grow with was with Sarah, my fiance. So he told me, my mentor warned me, he said, hey, you've released this stuff with your dad by having the conversation that you were scared of and that you don't want to do. And it was painful. It's cool. So now what's going to happen, I bet, is your fiance is going to take the role of your father and, he, and she's going to be the one who's not going to approve and she's going to push, right? And I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. And that did happen. And so then I was like, well, what do I do? I don't want to say, I, don't want to, I want to be the nice guy, whatever. And he said, let me give you an analogy to anchor this in. I was like, all right, I'm, I'm listening. I'm all ears. That's why I paid the guy, right? And he said, if you were like an MMA fighter and you, were, you had the opportunity to go train with the best person on the planet, I'm like, okay. And he's like, you're going to go fight for the belt. And so you're going to go play, you're going to play like at welterweight for the belt. And you're going to fight one weight class up and train with the best guy, one weight class up. And you get in the ring, you've, you've prepared, you've done all the work and you get in the ring with the guy or the gal and they're hitting you like at 65% of their capacity. How would you feel? I said, I'd be pissed. I mean, I, I did the work. I came in there to train with the best. I want them to hit me with everything they have because I'm prepared. I want to level up. And he said, well, when you're in a relationship with somebody, whether this is your father, whether this is with Sarah, and you're not bringing everything at them, you're hitting them with 65% of their capacity, with your capacity, therefore robbing them of the experience to grow themselves. And I was like, hmm, I see that now. So then I shifted and said, okay, boom, I get to have the real raw conversation with Sarah. And as a result, if she didn't like it, that's okay. I don't need her admiration. I don't need her approval. Like we're two completely separate individuals. So as a result, we get to spar when we have conflict. Doesn't make conflict bad. It just allows each one of us to level up in the areas that we need to go. I want her to hit me with all of her 100% capacity and I want to do the same. So we're both growing as individuals. Once I understood that, that analogy, I've been able to bridge that into my client's world, to my relationship with Sarah, to my dad, everything hinges upon that because ultimately I'm here to allow other people to grow and change and evolve. And the only way that I can do that is be able to show up with 100% of my capacity to give them that experience to ultimately grow. And that's why my clients have been seeing tremendous amounts of growth and even myself seeing tremendous amounts of growth to be able to come into this conversation and be able to give everything to those people that I come to contact with. Awesome, I love it. All right. So AJ, we could talk all day long. I love talking to you and you've got so much wisdom to share. Um, and I'm just so excited to have you back and hopefully you'll come back again. Absolutely. Anytime. Awesome. We do need to start wrapping up. So before we do, can you tell me um, books? What was the most influential book you ever read? Most influential book I ever read was um, Awaken the Giant by Tony Robbins. And it's one of those books. It's a huge book. But if it will totally change your mindset because we talked about disempowering questions. That one will help. It will like rattle your belief systems. But don't just read the book. It's like it's, it's really like, I mean, like a, a workbook. I mean, it, it has stories and it's going to inspire you, but there's work to do. And that book completely changed my life in 2010, 2011 um, by just not reading it, but literally by doing the work in the book completely radically shifted my life. Awesome. And guilty pleasure. Uh, guilty pleasure, chocolate, dark chocolate, any dark chocolate or popcorn. I love popcorn. I've gotten to make where I make like popcorn and a little Amish skillet thing every single night. Love popcorn. That's awesome. I had a bit of a popcorn addiction, but I was doing the air pop popcorn there for a while. Um, so one more question. Favorite self-care strategy? Favorite self, uh, weightlifting. Weightlift, actually nice. there's multiple things. Weightlifting, uh, meditating like five to six times a day and then drinking a gallon of water a day. Those three things like simultaneously work great for me. Beautiful. So now if our listeners want to get to hey, know you I better you and find out more from episode, you, where can they go? You did, simple. Just go to ajamix.com. That's iTunes, like the simple, so great way. There's like tons of resources the there. Um, or the other places like this, hit me up on Facebook. It's just Facebook slash so um, AJ Amix or Twitter slash Twitter slash AJ Amix. Like any of those super easy. Awesome. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. Thanks again to my guest today, Anthony John Amix. 
make sure you visit ajamex.com to check out what he's got going on and to get in touch with him. And for today's show notes, resource links, and all of the other good stuff I've got going on, come on over to bbrshow.com to connect directly with me and my guests through the comments on each one of the show notes pages. And if you want to grab AJ's interview from the Business Building Rockstar Summit, you can visit bbrshow.com forward slash bbrs2015 and get access to his interview as well as 29 more. If you find value in the show, I would absolutely love it if you would spread the word, tell your friends, let people know about us. Thanks again for tuning in. I love you tons. I'll talk to you next time where I'm hanging out with Ellen Finkelstein and talking about how to get over your fear of new business technology. Don't miss it. And there you have it. If you enjoyed this episode of the Business Building Rockstar Show, be sure to subscribe on iTunes so you don't miss a thing. And visit bbrshow.com for all the show notes and links to resources discussed on today's show. Plus, lots more.